everyone, welcome back to Savor the Moments with TN Friends. I am so excited for today's culinary adventure with our friend, Chef Jay at Barron's Cove. Welcome. I know, welcome back, welcome we're back. back. <laughs> and my friend Kate over here with um, Immigrants Food Institute, but now it's East, East End, End Food, Food Institute, Institute, which you noticed we filmed there a couple times with Chef Nick and Surreal Jay with Hampton's Meal Prep. And now I decided why not bring Kate along. With Happy this food to be venture. Here. And with my friend Jay. Yes, Kate and I have worked together a lot in the past and present. And in future. In future. And future, yeah. So let's take a peek and see what so we have going on. So let me show here. you uh, our kitchen garden. It's all okay. the way around back here. Let's take a walk through um, our area. So we have herbs, we have some vegetables, we have lettuces, um, we have some, veg some vegetables as well, and um, we have some decorative items as well. Are they edible flowers? The edible flowers here. We have our uh, nasturtiums, which we use the flowers and the berries. People don't realize the, the seed pods here of the nasturtium. That's a, uh, that's a flower, but this we don't have any right now. But the seed pods can be pickled and used like capers. Oh. oh. So we have our, 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 our sugar snap peas here. We have our uh, Long Island cheese pumpkin. Wait, where, where, where? This is Long Island cheese pumpkin right here. Okay, sorry. You can't see it. Okay, so it'll be growing right here. So this okay, is right here. Like our garden of the Three Sisters garden, where we have Got corn, it. squash, beans, okay. and pumpkins here. And we were just talking about that with the yes. Shinnecock. Oh. Yes, we it's were. all tied in together. It's a great dinner, yeah, we, and Jay was part of that yes. at the um, South Fork Kitchen. Yes, so. lemon time. And, um, <gasps> That's what you were telling me. If you smell it, it's got a bit of a lemony flavor to it. Um, and then this is a shad, shad berry bush, um, which was originally in the area. It's a savory berry. Um, it's named the shad berry because the sea, it, it's, it's rich from the Hudson Valley. Um, the berries would be ready when the shad would come up the Hudson River. Wow. So that's how it got its name. So yeah. Hudson Valley. The Hudson that's Valley, where New York you State. were from. Um, I originally, I grew up in the Hudson Valley. I worked in Manhattan and in the Hudson Valley up until like the time I came out here. See, I like how you're bringing your a personal touch yeah. to well, bears. It's part adding of New York a little home. Yeah. It's, you know, it's old in the New York State. So, yeah. you know, we are in New York State. You okay. Know, it's a great part of it. Um, so here we have some uh, squash that we're growing. Um, this is going to be some dec this is decorative corn, um, which will nice. So what will happen is also the corn will actually be part of the squash will climb up the corn without killing the corn. So it's when will this happen? This October. Is, so yeah, this will happen towards the end of the summer. Okay, I'm go I have to come back and okay. watch right. and eat and eat. <laughs> so here we have our, our dill, which we also we have some of the flowers which will turn to seeds. So we're using this. And then this is Lovage. Um, this is one of my favorite herbs. This comes back every year. Um, it has a almost like a celery-like flavor to it. Uh, we use this in a lot of our salads. You need it. Mmm. Nice. Yeah. I like that. It's really good. It's one of my favorite herbs. And this wow. gr grows back all year. And next year we cut this back at the end of the year. Mm. And we'll have more. It keeps coming back. Coming and what back. do you use this in? We use this in a salad. We use this in a couple of the dishes we use this on a seared tuna dish that we okay. have on the menu and a couple other things. Okay, so. I like Bloody it. Mary. Bloody Mary would be great. <laughs> Stick in there. Okay, <laughs> oh. no, I really like it. Sagaponic vodka. Mm -hmm. yeah, there we go. go, perfect. <laughs> and here we have some rosemary and some lettuces. Um, here we're just using some different lettuces, some we cut this back. Um, we have peppers, jalapenos, more dill. We have some cilantro as well. Ooh. Um, and you notice the cilantro here is coming to, uh, to flat no. yeah, the cilantro is going to flower and what we'll do is we use we'll use the green seeds once they're they go to seed um, the coriander seed when it's green has a nice citrusy flavor to it so we use that in some of our things as well wow and of course we have mint which we use in our bar and as well as we use the mint in our um, pest on our pest on our chimichurri mm -hmm. uh, cut some of the you know cut some of the, the, the cleaner flavor into the not just the pest, um, the parsley and the oregano. So does your, I call it the heart of house. Does the heart of house come out here every every day to start snipping the herbs? Well, Who does we that? go through it. Um, it depends who's walking through it today. Okay. Um, sometimes it's me, sometimes it's some of the staff. Okay. Um, the bartenders are always constantly using this. Uh, a lot of the herbs, the basil, the sage, and the mint in some of our cocktails that we feature here. Ooh, I guess we have to have a cocktail. 
Oh, yeah. Why yeah, not? And it, why not? <laughs> or wine, not. Yeah. Have some wine. <laughs> well, I love the fact that you have your own um, vegetable garden here because it's showing the guests that you are all about eating right. for the season and being local. The volume that we're doing, we really need to have multiple purveyors. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things also, I try to have multiple purveyors from, for certain items because where there are micro, certain microclimates, um, something can happen to, like a, there's a blight on the basil in one area, the other area, the, the basil is fine. Mm. Um, so you really have to have contingency plans, you know, w with what happens. People don't realize in certain areas about the microclimate. As we see, we're in the microclimate, we're getting some rain, rain. Well. Yes, yes. So we're getting micro rain on. So let's follow uh, you to the kitchen. Let's go inside and let's eat some food. Like in the rooms, they have farm to face products, skincare products. Yeah, that's, that, that's the herbs are from our farm. Yeah. Like, I just love that. I'm like, wow. From the bathroom to the kitchen. <laughs> so they're, really, they're really true believers. So we can go up this way. Okay. So this is the secret entrance oh. to the lair. Yeah. Hey! Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm well. Welcome to Marin's Cove. Thank you so much. Okay. These in particular are my favorite. There are loft suites. Ooh. So they're the only ones that are overlooking the pool. Oh, wow. It's beautiful. Yes, this is the highlight. You have the heated saltwater pool overlooking the bay wow. area. It's absolutely a gorgeous view. Yes, okay. we do have some treatment rooms. We have the lovely massage therapists. They're absolutely phenomenal. That's beautiful. Yes. That's wonderful. You see everyone, so this is how you can savor your moment when you're on, in Sac Harbor. Come here. Come to Barron's Cove. Cheers. 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 Thank you so much, Chef Jay, for inviting us out. Oh, you're welcome. Oh it's my a pleasure God, you're having amazing. you here at Barron's Cove and showing you around and showing you the farms and what we're doing in the kitchen and what you know what we're all about here. Now I and thanks for having me. Of course, Kate. Appreciate and having it. Kate this here is as well. Gorgeous. It's I mean, always nice to see Kate. It's a tie right here because when we what did the that? movable feast right. with Slow Food, mm -hmm. ran into Kate. Yeah. And then I ran into you. Yeah. And I'm like, why not bring everyone together? Of course. Well, yeah. all the good people circles kind of are concentric yeah. rings and come together. We're all working really hard to improve the local food system. So. Right. You know, between, you know, what we're doing here, um, what Slow Food East End is doing, um, one of the programs that we do, we, 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 I'm involved in is the Chef's School program. Um, the Chef's School program is a pilot program that was started in for Slow Foods USA. Um, Slow Food East End is the first chapter to do it, um, where it brings together chefs, local schools, uh, mm -hmm. kids, and farmers to kids cooking their own food. So we've done a couple of events out here. We did a pilot program out in Orient Point. Uh, we've also been at the Hayground School out here as mm -hmm. well. And it's going to be something that's going to be rolled out nationally at some point as well. Yeah. So are you guys doing the event at Hayground this July, I believe uh, it is. I don't know. I is was that a part of it? Much, no, this okay. was um, the Hayground School is unique, where the kids actually cook their food. They, they have, have a wonderful wow. program. They have, there. A they have a chef there. They have a farmer, a, a, a farmer there. Uh, they're growing a lot of their own food as well as so. Part of the educational pro program there is the kids cook their own lunch. Wow. Uh, different kids come in through. Um, <laughs> and I went in with Joan Tutoro, who runs the Orient Inn. And we did we did a uh, program we did a menu of New Orleans style food, uh, mm -hmm. so they were getting exposed to different foods. Um, we showed them how to do gumbo. I had him wow. we had to make him beignets, which was the throne. Aww. And we made like hundreds of beignets. The kids I was, oh, never I get, want one now. The kids, yeah. never, the kids never get like desserts, so they were thrilled. Uh, yeah. We had them running around on sugar, uh, sugar highs. But um, yeah, it was fun. And what's great is, and we just did a uh, pilot program, which is going to be rolled out at the Orient Point School, with the Oyster Pond School, uh, where sixth graders, 10 of them got selected. Myself and various chefs came in and for over an eight week period, and we cooked a menu, and different menu items. And then last Wednesday was culmination, and we wound up doing 
a dinner for their parents, a school board for 50 kids, myself, wow. various chefs and the kids. So the kids, mm -hmm. um, you know, working together, learning where the food comes from, how to prepare the food, how to eat healthy, and just work at the camaraderie of, you know, learning how to cook and then how it feels to cook, have people <laughs> eat your food. Wow. Yeah, I mean, the one thing Slow Food is really amazing about is getting these edible school community gardens organized. And I was involved in the Hampton Bay's Good Ground Community wow. Garden. It's one of the only ones that's a school community garden. And it's amazing to see. I mean, my daughter has been there since she was in the little carriage. Okay. And to see kids growing things, they learn where it comes from, but they're also more likely to try it right. then, which yeah. is so important in an age where now everybody wants chicken fingers and french fries. Yeah. <laughs> and you see the kids menus. I mean, do you how do you design a kids menu well, we um, at to, a restaurant? <laughs> yeah, you know, we have to have the simple things, but uh, one of the things which we do have on the menu now is we have uh, we call fish chips or fish th okay. and it, it's porgy, which is actually the fish that we're using mm -hmm. here in the in the tacos and uh, we're getting from Peter Haskell. So it's a locally caught sustainable fish which mm -hmm. we're making fish 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 sticks. My daughter um, and her friends love those. Yeah. And <laughs> it's so it's good. real fish, it's not processed fish, it's a locally yeah. caught fish. And it gets them uh, to taste local fish and not just the processed products as well. Mm -hmm. Now, let's dive into your story. Okay. I want to know, number one, like how, when did you know you wanted to become a chef? Um, I've always wanted to be a chef. Um, I've been, I started washing dishes at 16 in high school. And from you there, should have started earlier, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> At Maybe home. time. Yeah, really. <laughs> you know, I, I think it's illegal for me to be working that young. But um, you know, I worked as a dishwasher, and this was in the mid '70s, and. The chef that, that I was working with was a Culinary Institute graduate wow. back in the 70s and had me peeling vegetables and then he taught me a few things um, and I just got the bug and I just and then from there I worked in a bakery um, and then I went to culinary school. I went to the State University of New York at Cobble School mm -hmm. um, which has a great culinary program right now and from there then I went to work in New York when I graduated in the early 80s so mm -hmm. which was an adventure in itself there. Why was it an adventure? Yeah, it was great. Well, you know, at the time, it was a time of the still of the French, you know, classic cooking. Um, mm -hmm. I had got an opportunity to open a restaurant called La Reserve, which was on 49th and 5th, um, classic restaurant. I was one of the two only two Americans in the in the whole wow. kitchen, and I literally had to clean fish for six months to get the opportunity to work on the line. Um, and the only wow. reason I got an opportunity to work the line was the guy who was working the grill that day called out sick. And the oh, chef wow. goes, okay, Jay, you're working the line. And you got thrown to the fire. And it was a good experience. It was, you know, I loved it. It was tough. It was during, you know, the, um, still the classic training of French cuisine, which was great for me because by doing that, I, I learned how to cook everything. You really learn the basics of cooking, which a lot of people don't have the opportunity right now these days. Mm -hmm. um, it's all different types of food. And, um, it, you, it, you learned how to do everything from butchering to making sauces to working the cold station wow. um, and it was a great learning experience and from there I, I would even go to different restaurants in New York and work for free just to see other things. Wow. So I'd, wor I'd work there then I'd work somewhere else for free um, just to see other things and ideas and mm -hmm. you know I worked my way through New York I worked in a lot of the French restaurants I worked at a place called Regine's <laughs> in the mid 80s was, which like the prototypical disco uh, lifestyle is a rich and famous place um, then I worked in Montreche. Um I was the chef at Odeon and Cafe Luxembourg in Manhattan in the early, late 80s early 90s um, and I've done corporate things. I was the corporate chef for Harley Davidson in New York. Wow, um, that must have been fun. Which was a completely different That's high volume story. <laughs> yeah, it was a whole different story. Um, I've worked in a lot of different types of places. Then mm -hmm. from there, the last place I worked was up in Westchester County at a place called Crabtree's Kittle House. Um, it's been there for 30 years. Um, it's one of the farm to table pioneers, I guess, in the area. Um, I, I had two 10 years there. I was there in the early 90s. And then in the late, you know, there was a 22 year gap. And um, we're a world class wine cellar as well. Um, John Crabtree was a great supporter of Slow Foods and as well. So, um, and then I came out here last year, and which was a complete culture shock. It was just time for a change in my life. And I came out here knowing nobody and just kind of. Now you know everybody. Now I know everybody. everybody. <laughs> yeah, great. which is great. I love yeah. it. Which Wait, is so really what good. drove you to come to the East End? Like, that's a story I always ask everyone. Like, what brought you to the East well, End? It was kind of, I was in Miami in March of last year, 
and just kind of relaxing. It was time for a change. I'm like, oh, maybe I'll stay in Miami. And then I got a thing from a headhunter about an opportunity in Sag Harbor. And I called him, and next thing you knew, by the end of April, I was, moved, I was moving out here and wow. coming out here. So it was by chance, and you know, it was a good opportunity. Um, it was time for me for a change. Yes. And I'm out here, and I'm, you know, I'm, I love Sack Harbor. You know, love the people that are out here and the slow food community as well. I'm always curious. At East End Food Institute, we're always focused about the local food system, and we ran into each other at Balsam Farm. Right. You said that you went to Coble Skill, and they right. have a big agriculture program. Right. Did that influence you in terms of food sourcing or learning um, about the food system? At the system? time, it really wasn't. I mean, there they had at the time there was a you know an ag system, and actually my roommate at the time was a dairy major. Oh wow! And but they also have a butchering program there. They were one of the first, mm -hmm. so we you know learn how to slaughter and butcher, wow. um, and they now have one of the you know world class facility now they've kind of grown mm -hmm. to what they're doing in terms of uh, hydroponics and the facilities there are unbelievable and this was well before young know, people even knew about farm to table yeah I think a lot of people were doing it you know at the Kittle house we were people were just coming to the back door and you know with stuff and before there was actually a moniker of farm to table I think a lot of people were doing it and I think what happened we had gotten so far away from it that a lot of the foods um, and I talked about the architecture before a lot of the foods that we were working with have lost flavor. It was more for production and commercial yes. and stability yes. where they could transport it. You know, one of the things you know we talk about is carbon footprint. Um, a lot of the GMO products have been made so they can be shipped across the country and they'll hold up. Yes. Where and they lose. F yeah. They're not made for flavor. They're made for stability. Mm -hmm. Where you have a great looking tomato but it, that tastes like nothing. Yeah. Um, where you're dealing with foods that are grown locally. You know, it's very similar to one. You have the terroir that it's grown in. The foods that are grown that were made for the area will have great flavor. You know, they may mm -hmm. not stay. You know, st you know, they may have uh, the shelf life of other products, but they're going to have flavor that you're not going to beat anywhere. Um, you know, one of the things we saw at Balsa Farms, and you've dealt with Peter, is like in the pesto that we're using today for our pasta, the spaghetti pasta. We're going to dive into which this. Which is right here. Yeah. Um, has the uh, basil from you know Balsam Farms. And that's um, what we picked up. That's and what then we that's. Up. You know. We should get a serving spoon. Yeah. yeah. We could just use a fork. Yeah. You could just oh, push good. it. We're not, we're not formal here. We're, <laughs> all right, we're, all right. You know, we're among friends. It's family. And that's uh, what we're talking about. Thank you. Know, you. Doing, you know, doing like something like the porgy, which is, you know, we get from Peter, which is a locally sourced sustainable fish where it may not be utilized, which has a lot of great flavor. Um, you know, we're using that. So. Yeah, the potatoes in the uh, tuna salad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna have you know, everything that. That's amazing. If you think about it, it's not being kept around a long time. With the shelf life is, mm -hmm. it's gonna have better flavor. It's e eaten when it's fresher, um, mm -hmm. as well. You know, one of the things okay. that um, Peter Haskell was explaining to me when I went and visited his facility mm -hmm. is that a lot of seafood um, people, they'll freeze the fish mm -hmm. when it's about to be going south, right? Yes. He freezes it at the height of freshness, right. and we're doing the same thing with the local produce, right. um, trying to preserve yeah. the height of freshness. Right. I think you know, the a lot of people there. don't realize where you need to have a relationship with the farm, with the fishmonger, with the fisherman. Is mm -hmm. It's not just important the ingredients, but it's how it's handled yes. to, to be when it comes off the boat or comes out of the field and then brought to the chef or the house or the, you know, the farmer's market. Um, that's almost more important than everything else. Mm -hmm. If it's not handled properly, it's not stored properly in the right way. And one thing, another thing I learned from Peter is he uses everything, like you're saying, no waste, mm -hmm. right. no waste. He even has a fertilizer that he's making from the, like the um, waste yeah. yes. pieces of fish from right. when you fillet a fish. And, yeah. and then also, you know, in terms chum. of sustainability, but also in terms of e economically, he's <laughs> using everything. There's no waste where he's making money on everything that he's getting, so mm -hmm. it allows him to have the opportunity to support local fishermen as well. With uh, the pesto that we make from uh, Balsam Farms uh, basil, mm -hmm. some, uh, some pecorino and romano cheeses, mm. um, and some extra virgin olive. Simple, clean, mm -hmm. great ingredients. This is clean eating. It's really, really nice. For sure. Yes. Um, you know, and it's, it's a great dish. It's simple. You know, and, and mm -hmm. I, I wasn't going to put this on the menu, and I got talked into it. And then the first couple of days of doing it, I'm like, <laughs> it's a great item. You know, it's a good way. item. You know, sometimes people just, you know, they want an appetizer portion. They just want something 
you know, simple. You know, throw some shrimp on here or some chicken mm -hmm. um, as well, and it's a great dish. Yeah, it's really beautiful. What inspires you for each season with creating the menu? Well, what a lot of times what happens is um, I'll, I'll see an ingredient and come up with a menu item. Mm -hmm. I try not to pigeonhole, like come up with an item and say, okay, this is what we got to do and let's shove the ingredients down, down the recipe's throat. Um, I'm always writing things down, you know, we'll keep notes from this year, we'll see what sold last year, what worked, what didn't work. Um, we try to, here at Barron's Cove, try to have our classics on the menu where people know they're going to have one or two items that they had last year, they're going to come mm -hmm. back. We had an item during the winter, we did a lobster pot pie, mm. which kind of became, you know, we're trying to, you know, it's classic, classic American seafood dish, uh, we, which dish that we changed to a seafood dish, be in our location where it'll be on the menu. Uh, the tuna dish that we do with dinner here, it's a, uh, an espresso rubbed uh, seared tuna. Ooh, wow, yummy. And we do that with a pickled watermelon lovage, which you saw in the garden, some feta yes. cheese, and some pickled oh, ginger salad, um, which is a dish we came back from last year. Um, our chicken that we have, our roasted chicken on the menu, um, Cape Resorts, we, have, we own an organic farm in South Jersey, um, and we got our chicken, they grow our own chickens for us. And, mm. um, it's great flavored chicken. So certain items, you know, we try to keep on. We look, we get feedback from the customers a lot of times, which I think chefs, a lot of chefs don't, you know, realize. And I know we all have our egos. And <laughs> I, if I said I was a chef without an ego, I'd be completely lying. <laughs> um, but you know, you, you want to, you have an idea, and you think it's a great dish. But you know what? If it's not well received, and if it's not what the customers want, you have to change. Mm -hmm. um, the bottom line is, you have to make the food what our guests. You know, our customers are our guests here. Yeah. And we want to make what they want. It, what they want. Uh, Eating yeah. for the season. Yeah. Well, I think it's a lot of fun. I mean, at the um, East End Food Institute, we have a small cafe, right. much less volume that's going mm -hmm. on here. But we're open for lunch, and I'm I write the menu. No, right. um, maybe that's surprising. But no, I saw the <laughs> no, menu. But no, I, 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 get, like, I get your menu. I see yeah, what it looks like. Uh, we change the menu every week yeah. because we want to support the local farmers yes. and food entrepreneurs. And um, I cook like a mom. It's fun. It's like yes. a little chop yeah. basket. What's in the cabinet? What's in the refrigerator? Yeah. And it's kind of fun but to I be able to do that. And what's nice you know, about it also get the is out. people that want to support you. If you have the same menu all the time, they get bored. I don't yeah, care sure. you know, how yes. good the food is, and yes. mm -hmm. they're gonna come and say, "Oh, what do we got at this?" You know, the East End, you know, food institute. Um, <laughs> seeing what's available, coming yes. in, you know, have something different. Right. Oh, you know, and then they'll talk. To, and it's like what I said it, it Boston Farms. Talk to the farmer. Talk to see what's around. Yes. See what's available. You know, you may come for one item, but it's not available. And the former will say, oh, you know what, you don't have, the, we have this, but we can tr try this. Yeah. You know, every, most couple, most families, when the, there's two working parents, you know, it's, they don't have a lot of time. No. But they still want to be able to, you know, people, mm -hmm. you know, as much as I would love to have people come out to eat every night, yeah. people don't eat every night. Yeah. Yeah. And, but when you're home, you don't want to, you know, make something that's frozen pizza or frozen. Yeah. And, you know, we've all mm -hmm. eaten frozen pizza. And we've all had, yes. you know, all that stuff. <laughs> but if you have a choice not to do that. It's mm -hmm. better, but it's something like, let's say, let's say the tuna and the swa salad. You could have the eggs hard boiled already, you could have the tuna poached already, yeah. you have your dressing made, you come home, you just throw whatever greens you have in there. Mm -hmm. and, and potatoes. And potatoes. And it's you're ready set. to go. It's all yeah. set to go. Mm -hmm. um, same thing with the taco. You can make all the mm -hmm. components of the taco, and then when you get home, you just throw you know, the taco on, you know, on the fire, and you cook your piece mm -hmm. of fish. Or if you really want to you know, get it, you could even cook the fish ahead of time, and then you just build it when you come home. Yeah. So what about meal prepping? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's meal prepping. My and favorite thing is to put the chicken either on the grill, like a whole chicken, yeah. or in the crock pot. I actually have something in the crock yeah. pot at home tonight. Yeah. <laughs> and then you could pull that chicken later for tacos right. and, you know, have a meal yeah. for the whole week. Or, you but know, like you said, you're doing nice. the chicken where you can get two meals out of it. Yes. Mm -hmm. you know, and then save the bones if you really want to go crazy and, and make yeah. soup. And make yes. soup. Yes. Yeah. And stock, and, you know, so That's what we do in our time. household. It's, yeah. it's tough. It does take time. It is hard. And I think just taking the time if you work and you have to go shopping, and it's mm -hmm. it's not easy. But yeah. what you're doing again for the guests is you're providing them a healthier experience when they're dining here. Yeah. Well, and the idea too, right? Yes. So you, oh, that's my favorite thing about going out to eat. Actually, is that when you get inspired by a dish, you know, right. and then you're going to go home and make it because yes. a part of it is the mental energy sure. that goes into the planning, right? Yeah. Yes. I mean, years ago. So you'd have like cookbooks and I still have like hundreds of cookbooks like I've been schlepping around as I'm moving I'm like 
what am I going to do with all these books? But now it's so easy. You go online and you just, you know, you go onto your website. You go on to, mm-hmm. you know, thing and see what's available. Or, yes. you know, look at an episode, past up Or you just Google, you know, you, you put in, um, you know, some, you put in, and then all of a sudden, like, you have 800 recipes for something. Yeah. And just use it for an idea, you know. Just get inspired. Yeah. You know, I learned by somebody teaching me, mm-hmm. and I always feel that you need to, you know. I completely agree same, with that. You know, yeah. You know, to, to bring it forward. Yeah, yes. exactly. Mm-hmm. You know, so if I always share recipes, you know, there's no, yes. I mean, the best advertising I have is if you get a recipe from me and you're cooking dinner in your house and they go, oh, where'd you get this recipe? And you'll tell your 10 mm-hmm. friends, you know? yeah. Yeah. And so it's, it's, you know. Well, and some people, like we said, they don't want to make it at home. They yeah. want to have someone else make it for them yeah. and now they'll know where to come and get exactly. <laughs> yes. exactly. Like the Arancini. Yes. Exactly. Like the Arancini. It wasn't too difficult, but I'd rather come and have you there make you it go. for me. <laughs> so I, I gotta wait for yeah. fall. I don't want anybody cooking. Yeah. Don't, don't cook wait, home, do they, so do I need to wait for fall for this? Dish? Yes, yeah, it's, the it's gone until okay. the fall. We're done. Yeah, because I just need photos. You have okay. to keep checking the garden yeah. Yeah. and okay. then seeing, and yeah. maybe we'll do another um, yeah. session. And we'll, yes. yeah, we'll always do some classes. You know, At those like, cooking you know. classes, I would, I would attend. Mm-hmm. I want to yeah. attend. Let's, I want yeah. you guys to try this. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. this yeah. is okay. So we're gonna so that's our tuna in the swan salad. Okay. Let's take on the classic tuna in the swans. What's great about it is. Beautiful. We utilize all the tuna. Um, we're using the loin for our dinner dish, and then we're using the, the, the scrap pieces or the other pieces for poaching in olive oil. Okay. Um, to so you got the components. The eggs that we're using are the, from Traber Farms, which is in the North Fork. Oh, cool. These are free range eggs um, mm. as well. Um, you know, they're can happy. Can I serve you some? You can serve me some. Okay. <laughs> I'm not, sorry, not too much. All right. Um, you're on a diet? No, I just, I don't <laughs> usually eat that much during the day. Well, I'm we're honored that you're sitting down and you're savoring with us. No, it's great. You know, it's, it's a rare great. opportunity. And, you know, to sit out here is, you know, we're this we're blessed with the location here. Yes, yeah, such beautiful. You know, mm-hmm. What's, you know, what's great also is, you know, you see the seasons changing. Yes. Um, how you see in the winter, there's, you know, now it's full of boats. Then you see the boats leaving. Yeah. Then, <laughs> then it's empty. Then you see the first boat come in. <laughs> and there's like one, there's two boats. Then there's like, it's like they're multiple. And then the Then you come here. back the next day. And <laughs> it's great. And you, you're like looking for certain boats, you know, like, oh, I remember from last year. And, mm-hmm. you know, then it's like, all of a sudden it's like, Oh, the boats are leaving. Summer's over. <laughs> we should do a time lapse out yeah. here. That, that would be good. Yeah. And see be how it changes cool. from yeah, here. Yeah, I should have to do that maybe next year. The dressing? It's uh, The dressing is a Chardonnay, uh, Chardonnay dressing. Mm. It has a little bit of honey in there. Mm. Uh, shallots, garlic, um, sh- uh, white wine vinegar, champagne vinegar, uh, mm-hmm. white wine vinegar, and mm-hmm. extra virgin olive. It's, it's just very simple you know, and clean. I like it. There's a lot of science involved in cooking. You know, yes, there, so is. there is. So there, there, everything has a reaction for. And a there's reason. Peter. And there's Peter yeah, with the fish. There's Haskell soup for this. Mm-hmm. I wonder if Peter will be there. No, it's not Peter. Peter. Just in time. Noise. I know. <laughs> um, Haskell seafood. There you go. <laughs> so. But is that a book that you source, like it's, that it's, you it's, look it's at, refer it's, it's, to all the well, time? I always have it. Um, it's actually yeah. it was republished recently. Okay. Um, I forgot the exact title on it, but Harold McGee is the um, author. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. It's like the Bible of food science. Because there's so much oh, wow. science within food and even farming, mm-hmm. wine, oh, the yeah. agriculture community. There's so much yeah. science behind it all. It's all mm-hmm. about limiting variables. Yeah. <laughs> and there's always a few. You never yes. <laughs> from everything. So mm-hmm. last but not least, we have our. Uh, fish tacos, which are uh, mm-hmm. locally caught uh, porgy that I get from Peter. Um, we have a cabbage slaw, pico de gallo, watermelon radishes, mm. a little bit of sour cream. Mm. Just, again, we're just talking about intertwining. We're talking mm-hmm. about Pete, Peter, and then he drives in and deliver the fish. Amazing. And we're talking about her, and she comes in delivering. This is a daily event with you. This is it's part of and my life, and it's this yeah. is one of the things that make it great. You know, yes. having people, meeting people like you, coming out and interacting with you Thank and you. your crew. Don't forget your crew. Thank your you. crew is very important. Thank you. Um, yes, it's a team. Know, We're a family. Yes, and you know, working with Kate and yes. Institute and mm-hmm. Slow Foods and you know, you know, working with Peter. It's, it's great. This is what makes the job great. You know, dealing with the yeah. kids. This is the best part of the job. It's the people. You. Yeah. And I want to say thank you so much. Well, you're welcome. Just, well, cheers. Oh, no, we got to add some here. Well, we're no, no, that's, oh, good. Okay. that's bad luck. Oh, ting, ting. Okay, that's good. Okay. We'll be to combine for okay. you. Yeah. That's right. going to get a little bit. Here we go. <laughs> cheers. <laughs> Thanks. Sharing cheers. is caring. Uh, yes, it is. Coming. Cheers. Thank you know, thanks you. for coming to Barron's Cove and seeing us here in Sag Harbor. Yes. I know you live here, but you're your guest yes. and come out. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll see what the future brings. We'll see you in many more. Many more. Thank you.